going back to the Saint Jerome painting, uh, woodcut, sorry, uh, going back to the Saint Jerome woodcut, Durer doesn't quite have the idea when he does that, but during his second visit to Italy, he makes it his expressed intention that he will learn the secret of perspective. And at some point in 1506, he does seem to, uh, we're not entirely sure who he learned it from, but he does seem to have learned the secret of perspective. So after after his uh, 1506 visit, we start to see that Durer's uh, paintings, Durer's woodcuts, do start to exhibit this mathematical perspective where uh, parallel lines do tend to converge towards a common vanishing point. And one of the important things, note that back here, it's a secret that you have to go out and find the right person to teach to. Well, Dura kind of blows the secret and tells everybody how to do perspective in Painter's Man, because they quite a bit of detail in terms of how perspective, how to, how to, uh, how to uh, draw things in perspective. So uh, this. Uh, so what about uh, what about these uh, ratios that uh, ratios that uh, seem to be fairly common in Renaissance art that seem to show up in, in things like Pacioli's defined proportion. And again, to reiterate, Pacioli is definitely of the opinion that the ancients constructed their temples and their art using key ratios. And Pacioli also identifies that this ratio between the diagonal of the pentagon and the side is what he refers to as the golden ratio. He seems particularly taken by this, and uh, Pacioli doesn't do this, but this is a fairly, you, uh, fairly common illustration of this effect, and if you take a look at the uh, Parthenon in Greece, then what we have is we have a whole bunch of rectangles here, a whole bunch of rectangles and ratios that seem to fit into this uh, ratio of the diagonal of the pentagon to the side. Um, well, it's not entirely clear that that's actually the case. Uh, uh, several several issues here. This uh, this particular arrangement here, uh, we can also construct if I take two squares here, drop a square on top, add another square, add another square, add another square, and we get what's uh, some, we, we essentially get a Fibonacci sequence there. And sometimes uh, this particular uh, this can be turned into a curve by joining the uh, uh, joining the circular arcs. We get what's sometimes called a Fibonacci spiral. And <coughs> one of the things we know is that the Fibonacci, the terms of the Fibonacci sequence, tend towards the golden ratio. Uh, it seems that, so it seems more natural that something like the Parthenon, where we do see that uh, we can generate that ratio using the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, also, the other important thing to point out, all the ratios Vitruvius identifies as important, they're all rational, uh, they're all rational, they're all ratios of whole numbers. The idea of uh, the golden ratio is a, uh, is uh, an incommensurable ratio and does not fit into the Vitruvian scheme. Uh, and, of course, the most important thing, we don't have any actual evidence that classical artists deliberately incorporated the golden ratio. Uh, we can identify something like this and identify that there, there is something that approximates the golden ratio in there, but it's not entirely clear that somebody set out to incorporate the golden ratio or whether they used something a little bit simpler that gave them the golden ratio incidentally. Probably the most telling thing here, and what I, and the most telling thing here is Petroli while he thinks that the golden ratio is a very important ratio, doesn't actually, doesn't himself use the golden ratio in one of the places where it would be most natural to incorporate. And that is in typography. So going back to that, 